Let's turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 13. I just read one verse of chapter 13. And I saw one of his heads, as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. All, all the world one dead after the beast. Amen. Today, we had a, I go through a great time myself. I was uh, going to share my testimony with you because that's going to be my preaching. Because the Lord has been very, very good to me. And uh, that's a great testimony for me. Because for the past uh, 17, uh, 87 to now, it should be 80, 17. No, no, no. Simple. 97 to now, it should be 17 years. I've been on drugs, taking a lot of life saving drugs. Most of you don't know, but sometimes it's good to tell people who you are. Because you can, you can only preach from experience, you can preach from what you know. Not what you hear. So sometimes when we come out from the word of God, you have to bring up your experience in the Lord. Sometimes you can hear people preaching and you preach the same thing. You hear people talking, you talk the same thing. You hear the word, you read the word of God, you say the same thing. But the impact of preaching is where you experience the Lord yourself. Hallelujah. Face to face. Hallelujah. 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 And uh, I've been doing very good. The drugs show very well. The, the doctors always call me the miracle of the hospital, Molinese. They are very proud to see me. When they see me, the, the new nurses will come around to see the yes. That's very good testimony. You know what it is? Yes. 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 You know how you become so popular, everybody wants to see you, want to know the guy whom God is dealing with, whom can overcome, where everybody is dying, he's still walking and preaching and teaching and jumping and making children. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 That's a great miracle. Some of us you are going through miracles you don't see. You want to get millions before you thirsty for now. So all my eyes now recently have become so good, so perfect, so well that uh, I was just saying, God, today I'm going to stop this medicines because once I stop the medicine, there are things I can do. So on the fifth of November, somebody can check if that should be Wednesday. I was. To take all my exams, bodily files, the hospital with my pathologist to see, and I, I bring them before my pathologist. They were looking at me, they go to my exam. I said, We have no everything already because now, you see, you can't hide everything. If you do an exam, if you read bodily, the central already know what you've done, so there's no need to see. So they saw, I have a photo to the institute, the exam is no more to bear. They come on, Mike is a bend, they could see my photo, and I'm a But then, you feel they started typing something, I saw that they're typing. Piano therapeutica again. I said, Do you want me to take the medicine? I said, Yes, you have to continue the medicine. So when I came home, I was very sad. Believe me, I was very sad because I was thinking it's a day of testimony, it's a day of miracles. So I went to my house, closed the door, and lie on my head on my bed. I don't know if I remove my shoes, but maybe I remove my shoes. I will not die in my shoes. So I was there and a voice came. The scars are for my testimony. Let's turn our back to the book of Songs of Solomon. We can continue because these things are very touching. I want you to go for you. And uh, if you have the Amplified Bible, I would love to read from the Amplified Bible. Songs of Solomon. Songs of Solomon, they are songs of love. Everybody who reads Songs of Solomon will be talking about romance, will be talking about love, how your doctor, your loved one has come to knock on your door, how you see him like a lily and a rose, you want to give back to your loved one. So people say Solomon because they got a lot of wives, he's a very romantic man, and he was reading all, writing all these books. But then he was inspired by God, not by romance. Therefore I begin to understand that God, the, 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 the words in that book must be taken into consideration. Because God too is very lovely. God is very romantic. God is somebody who loves us that He even take His own begotten Son to die so that He will replace us. Something must be there. Psalms of Solomon, chapter 5. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. 
There are a lot of things we can transmit because we experience this. So I want to transmit the word of God today. The amplified version of the songs of Solomon said, I went to sleep. But my heart stayed awake. I dreamed that I heard the voice of my beloved as he knocked at the door of my mother's cottage. Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my spotless one, for I am way too heavy that night you. My hair is covered with it. Should I continue? No, amen. I went to sleep. But my heart is awake. You wait to sleep, but your soul is not sleeping. I wait to sleep, but my heart is awake. What was Solomon trying to say? Why should I hear a voice telling me the stars are for my testimony? And why should God allow me to hear this word? I went to sleep, but my heart is awake. My soul is awake. Why should we suffer for many years? And after you thought that you are about to come back to your position, God will tell you, those stars that you go through, they are for my testimony. I went to sleep, but my heart is away. Now I would like to let this pass by that this is a house of miracles. Many miracles are taking place in this house, but unto God, Give it to somebody to open our eyes. We don't see the miracles. Everybody is desiring to be somebody. Oh, you desire to be a great man of God. You desire to work and have money. You desire to become a lawyer and engineer. You desire to have your family laughing with you when you desire to marry. You desire to be working. But when you went to sleep, what is sleeping? Ah, you talking to us? I see it as a state of unconsciousness. It's a state where you are sleeping, you cannot understand where you are. You don't know. Either you are sleeping on a mattress or you are sleeping on the ground. All you are doing is that you are sleeping. You don't know either you are sleeping in Sydney or you are sleeping in Goma Profedo. You don't know. You don't know. My daughter. Because you are always sleeping at that material moment. I'm going to say material moment is not a good English. I'm not an Englishman. Allow me to speak English the way I want to speak it. At that material moment you are sleeping, you don't know where you are sleeping. It's true? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. You wish you to be sleeping in the White House, but that's not a, a, a safe place for you. <laughs> at that moment, you don't know where you are sleeping, so you are unconscious, you are dead, you don't know what is happening around you. And most of us who walk in this state of being dead. You are dead because what you desire to do, you cannot do it. So you are dead. Let me come quickly so you can understand me. You are there because at that time that everybody is working, you are not working. You are asleep to your desire of working. At the time everybody is married. I make you bachu, 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 bachu. You sleep alone. You feel lonely. Nobody comes to tell you I love you. You desire to marry. But you cannot marry, you are dead, you are sleeping. Mm. Your desire is as, as lost. At the time everybody is going to school, you wish to go to school. But your parents don't have the money to sponsor you. And you wish you, your, your brain is always working on how you can be able to achieve. What, but you cannot go ahead. You are dead, you are sleeping. You desire something, but that particular moment you don't know where you are even at because your mind is somewhere else. 
I'm just saying. Your mind is somewhere else. Okay. Your mind is somewhere else. But you are in a different position. You are upset because what you wish to be, at that time your friends are doing the same thing, you cannot do it. You have been very sick. And the doctor has declared that you cannot get healed. It's a state of unconsciousness. It's a state of not recognizing what you really want to be. So you are unconscious to your own desires, to what you want to be. You might have been oppressed. And the oppression has caused another thing. That now you are limping, always limping. You wish to walk well like any other person, but you cannot. You might have a problem with your heart. You see people going around with an oxygen bottle because they can live only on days. Something is happening in the room here now. Be very sensitive. And uh, you want to, and you wish that you die. And you may think that what you are going through, you are finished there. But the miracle of it, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you. How many people are in this room who are not working? Can I see you by your hand? All right, we are many. How many people are here who are looking for the fruit of the womb? Can I see you by your hand? We are many. How many people are here who desire something from God? And cannot have it? We are many. We are many. You are sleeping. You desire your home, you are sleeping. The miracle of it that what caused you to be here? What are you doing here? Why are you still in the house of God? When you come to God, you are not working, you have no money to eat, but you are able to make it to the house of God. Hey. I'm going to sleep. My God keep my heart conscious. I was unconscious physically. I was unconscious of the things I want to do. I was unconscious of how I want to be. But God, who has got multiple gods, has kept my soul awake. That I will not sleep and die with whatever heart. But I will pray to the house of the Lord and worship God. I went to sleep, but my heart is awake. Are you with me this morning? Yes. So anybody who is here going through some problem, Say to your friend, I went to sleep. But God keep my heart away. Say it again, I went to sleep. But God keep my spirit away. Because what is in me is greater than what is in the world. Put your hands together. So that's the meaning of what most of us we go through. You go through things that cannot be described. Yesterday was a very good time. Our minister took us to the book of Lamentations. And when I was listening to yesterday's uh, word of presentation, I understood that God called Jeremiah and Jeremiah was called by God. Before he was formed in the mountains, so God knew him and God called him. And when he was coming out, he was coming out already like a prophet. You were saying, you were saying that Lisa was speaking tongues when he was three years old. Uh, some, of, some of the children were born dumb. You know, they were already born like a prophet. So he knows that he's already like a prophet. He knows what he's supposed to go through. But as he was desiring to be a prophet of God, he was going through problems. That's what they call him the weeping prophet. He go through problems. Once he was still desiring, he was dead. But God keep his soul awake. God speaking to him. In your problem, keep your soul away because God will be speaking to you. Amen. So how come that uh, God will tell me my scars 
is my testimony. But what is a scar? A scar is an impromptu. Is is is. Okay, tell me the meaning of a scar. I've never the mark which is left after a wound. A mark of things. Why? Listen, this is why God creates scar things. Why do you get wounded? Get healed. But God allowed the scars to remain on the skin. What God should say, those scars, why God cannot kill everything? But what God should say, those scars are for you, my testimony. Why should God cause testimony out of pain? Why God cannot glorify himself? That I should go through pain for you, God, to be glorified. Hallelujah. Why should the scars that I carry, why, why should they be the testimony of God? Why is it that you who is not working and come to the house of God, why should that your inability to work be the testimony of God? Because God really wants to take you out of it now. Yeah. God wants to bring you out. Yeah. Say, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. No matter how long I've gone through, I am coming out. And today, God is going to take you out. And those days of your past years of suffering, they are only testimonies to God. Amen. Those years of suffering, they are only the scars that you have carried around you. Because if those scars are not there, you will forget God. You hear me there? Yes. Remarkable man. If God will not allow those problems and those stains on your skin, you will forget the miracle of God. If I don't continue going to the hospital again for every month, the doctors continue to see me, they'll forget that God worked for someone like this. Each time I take a tablet and drink, I know God, you have saved me. Because many people who are around me, they, they go, they die. They were not expecting me to be alive. So each time I take a tablet and drink, that's the scar of God. Each time you go through some too, you are not working, but you are able to eat. Each time you are eating out of your work, is the scar of God. God is reminding you, I'm able to do it exceedingly, abundantly, above your expectation. For you to live in the way of God, allow to God to take you through. We just want to be like Christ. That's a good song. But to be like Christ means what Christ has gone through. So when you resurrect, you resurrect to, the, to glory. How do you resurrect to glory? Last Thursday, we started teaching on reflections of the end time. And uh, before I sat on that subject, when I prepared the lesson, I was telling Pastor, it's difficult for me sometimes to understand the book of Revelation. The seven heads, the seven tails, the seven lambs. I can't understand, Pastor. So I want you to be a So when we are teaching, you can be able to expound to me because sometimes I can't understand. And uh, after I talked with Pastor, the Lord let me understand that the book of Revelation is a book of mystery. Okay? Yes. It's a book that takes place after we are dead. It's a book that takes place after we have received the glorified body. So what happened, what you cannot understand is that you are taking the physical mind, the mentality, the chevelology to understand something which is mystery. You can't just understand. It needs my own revelation before you can understand it. Because those things happen in the glorified world. You cannot use the mind today to understand things that happen in the mysterious world. Amen. So I have an answer that look, only God can help us to understand. Now there is a beast here, which the book of Revelation we have read. The Bible said, he was wounded, but God healed the wound of the beast. Amen. So we know that no matter the kind of wound somebody has gone through, wounds are pains that you go through. Wounds are the sufferings that you go through. Wounds are the desires that you wish to desire but you cannot have them. They are sufferings physically, morally, psychologically, uh, uh, spiritually. They are wounds, they are pains that you go through. Many of us here, we see that we laugh, we smile, but we are going through pains. Mental pain, psychological pain, spiritual pains, we are going through. Many things are happening, but we cannot be able to explain it to others. We come to the church, alright? The church has become a place of fellowship. We come to the church, we laugh, but when we go back home, our weight, our feelings are weight. We cry, we cannot sleep. I go through pains myself. 
physical pains. I go through spiritual pains. When I heard yesterday that uh, one great man of God died last Sunday, Dr. Miles Muro, so wonderful. Why? Why can why should this man die so young? After church service, going to take the plane, the plane crash. That the what? You speak of his death. My God. I was so sorrowful. So what we preach today now? Last Thursday, before I even heard this news yesterday, last Thursday I was saying that we talk about the end time. And we are all waiting for the end time. To those who are here, you can understand, I say, everybody has his own end time. Rumors of war, forget about that one. Your end time. Because we don't know when you're going to die. So the only time you can prepare for that way time is not you wait for the rumors of war. It's now. You don't have time again to change. You don't have a time again to have a place of fellowship. The only time you have now is when you are alive. And when you are alive is when you are now breathing. Because when you go out of here, everything can happen. How can that man of God? But how can he die? He's a step, but how can this man die? A mentor like you. I've never seen a great teacher like him. When he teaches the word of God, he's teaching and he cannot open the Bible. We'll be at the front and be laughing at the teaching. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. We'll be laughing at the teaching. With all degrees. I saw him talking with uh, the late uh, uh, Mills of Ghana, talking with presidents. Did that she teach her like that? Just passed away. So I was asking back, God, we could not reveal to him that he's going to die. But that was the time for him. The only time we know we are living is when? Now. So the change must take place now. The transformation of the mind must take place now. Hallelujah. Amen. Do not wait because tomorrow will not wait for you. Teach us to never, to know about our days that we can apply our house to wisdom. Everything we see today is teaching us to know about our days. That our days are counted in infinity. It can be now, tomorrow, tomorrow night. Are you prepared to meet the Lord? Forget about the rumors of war, the pestilence, all those their stories. You are your age. It's about now. We know that the end time is coming. It's okay. But we ready to meet Christ when Christ came in the trumpet. Last time I have a WhatsApp message that there's a, an angel in the sky in Ghana, Accra. And they take the picture and uh, they send me the WhatsApp. And I replied that the angel is good, he's not having a trumpet. Because when the angel who is coming for the end time comes with the trumpet, there's no time to take pictures. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we don't, we don't have time to make him what's happening. Because it will be a trickle of a second. When the last trumpet will blow, you are, you are just vanishing. Don't worry. I'm going, you are going, everybody's going over here. Hallelujah. But you will not have time to be taking pictures. That is not the, I said, that's not the end time angel. Because there's no trumpet on his hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Put your hands together, please. Now, the people who are wounded, they're still worshipping God. I don't think anybody come here because they are coming to share money or share anything here. You come here not because you want to meet somebody special for any business. You come here just because you want to be like Christ. You want to worship God. I can assure you that some, today is a marathon, a marathon in uh, Torino, 16th of November. And some people walk from the house to this place. Why can't you go back to your house? But because you want to meet God. You know, God is about to do something in your life. You know, Sunday you cannot stay without worshipping God. Even though you don't have to eat, but you really want to worship God. You don't have anything to do, but you still have to worship God. So worshipping God has become part of our business. Amen. Amen. Go for your pain. You are doing business here. Amen. Amen. Just be with me. Sometimes God is a in a way we don't know. 
Let's take the book of the book of Luke chapter twenty two. We read the verse thirty one and thirty two. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may seek you as priest. But I have prayed for thee, that their faith fail not, when thou have converted suddenly their brethren. Satan, at the time we were sleeping, Satan wished to kill us in our dreams, to kill us in our sleep. He desired to see us like we. But the Bible said that God is sustaining us. Amen. Amen. Can we have a little movement in the house? Don't worry, this guy, you can only move, but I'll just try to stop moving. The reason is that uh, when the great money comes, we shall have the change, so don't worry. Don't change now. Just hear the word of God. The great money will take place of itself. Satan wants to save some of us who we are sleeping. Satan wants to kill us in our dreams. But God said that he has kept our heart away. Amen. God is keeping us awake. God is praying for us. There's an intercessory prayer. So when you are awake, struggle others. Talk to others. Tell them what God is doing for you. So don't, don't cry with them, but encourage them. Amen. Yeah. Satan wants to finish Peter. He doesn't want you to be there and talk on the day of Pentecost. But Jesus said, I pray for you. Satan, God, pray for him that he is delivered. And when he's delivered, he's supposed to do what? To struggle the brother. As we are delivered, let's go out and tell the good news to others. Amen. 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 Let's not catch the people of the world. Otherwise, they will not see the kind of God we worship in. Let's tell the people of the world that I am strong. I am okay. Have you got a job? Don't say I don't have a job. Just say I don't have it yet. Because you know you are going to have it. Yeah. Yeah. I still take the medicine, I have not stopped yet. Because I know very soon I'm stopping it. Yeah. Yeah. Some they have to say I have not done it yet, but I know it's coming. Yeah. Because my Lord is able. Because when they born me, God is able, it's all I love within me. I am working with God is able. He's able. God is able to take me out. And save me. God is able to take you from your predicament to your purpose. He's able. My God is able. I am born. And within me, there's a spirit of God that is within me telling me, I am able. I am able. I am able. It's within me. The voice is coming. The voice is coming. If the voice can tell me, the, 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 the scars I look at there's nobody around. God is speaking. Your suffering is for my testimony. That is when God has taken us from opposition. We need to come and testify. There's a need for us to show others that our God is able to heal. He has taken. He was taken for my sake. For my sake. He was there on the cross for me. They give him 39 lashes for my sake, for my healing. So I only need to believe in God. Believe in Christ. And allow His Spirit to work in me. I am healed already. Yeah. I am supplied already. Yeah. He said, I will supply your needs according to His riches in glory in Jesus Christ. So I know I am in supply of God. Yeah. If the supply is not there, it's because it is not your time. Yes. God, it's not your time for me to go to, for God to help me. Amen. Amen. Can we place your hands together for the Lord? in us that the wound can cause. Some of us we are wounded through bankruptcy. Bankruptcy means we have come to zero and a zero in our accounts. We have been wounded by our wives, our husbands, our loved ones. Sometimes you may be wounded by even your pastor or your evangelist. Because they will say something you may not like. You may put up by people who are around you. As I said something, we read it before. As I chapter 30, the verse. No. Zechariah 13, the verse 6. Zechariah 13, the verse 6. I don't know why, if I start preaching, I cannot finish always. 
Zechariah 13, verse 6. Somebody is here. And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thy hands? What shall say unto him, What who are, which are these wounds in your, in your hand? Then he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. I was wounded in the house of my friends. It means that you can be in the house of your friends and you will get wounds around you. Your friends will wound you. Once you are outside in the camp of the enemy, you will be very safe. But once you come to the house of your friends, it's there you inflict the wounds. And Bible says that those wounds, when they are healed, the scars is for my testimony. Yeah. How can you hear that? That means your friends, your loved ones, your spouse, they can wound you. People who are supposed to protect you, they can wound you. But God said, I'm going to heal the wound. But when the scars remain, know that they are for my testimony. So you should continue worshiping me, no matter how the wounds are heavy. But because the scars will come, I'm going to remind you that, my God, I'm able to heal you. Amen. 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 And when the beast was wounded, Bible said there was witnessing. The people go around witnessing. When God heal you, you must go around witnessing. I'm not talking about healing from sickness, healing from your financial problems, healing from your problem of family, healing from your friends' problem, healing from your working place, healing when you get job. When those things happen in your life, you begin to witness to people about the goodness of God. Don't keep those things. Because those things happen because of the glory of God. And God struggle you when you are going through. Look at Job. Job, God has allowed the enemy to wound him over and over again. He was doing the so he can curse God and die. But the man stood firm. I want you to stand firm for the Lord. In time of adversity, stand firm for the Lord. Because God is taking you out. He's taking you out. I know in my spirit that something is going to happen here. And everybody is going to have a testimony in his mouth. I know I feel it in my spirit. I don't have long to say, but I feel it in my spirit. That God is going to bring this glory back to the house of God. The house of God is going to experience healing again. Jobs again. Now when the stars are there, they are for the So my God, if you can allow me, Jesus didn't say it, but God, if you can allow me to stop the medicine, I really like it, actually. As they say it. Because those medicines will really cause the state a lot of money. Hallelujah. It's as simple to God. Amen. Amen. But if it's the will of God, let it be done. Amen. Sometimes they take it, I don't have to eat them because they are like my food. Carry them alone. For who? Caramel, caramel. Now you see somebody who has been healed, but sometimes you see him limping. Why? The stars. Jacob saw the angel, and Jacob struggled with the angel all night long. But something happened to Jacob. Jacob. Lose something. Jacob left me. Why? To the glory of God. So sometimes when you are healed, and sometimes you are still limping or walking badly, or sometimes the weather cannot favor you, that's the scar of God. Those who go through bone problems, when it's winter, when the weather is very cold, they have problems. They'll still feel the pains. What is it? To glorify God. Because God allowed it to happen. So you do know that God is a healer. He's able to heal. So those pains, they are not for to excruciate in pain. They are not pains to kill you. They are pains that come so that you can have time to testify, to glorify God. But what God has done for you, they might have protected the leg, but God caused the leg to be healed. But in winter, you just live a little. Glorify you. I thank you. I bless you. I work on you because you are God. Hallelujah. Upon your life, you might go through pain, but don't take just a waste upon your life. 
It is to the will of God. Yes. But we are alive. You know what? We are living in the will of God. You don't live outside the will of God. So when you are living in the will of God, whatever comes to you is by God. Yes. But all you have to do is to glorify God. I glorify God in my parents. Oh, yes. See, I know the other day we saw that Stephen, 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 when they were killing him with stones, because he lives in the will of God, brother, what did he say? Do you remember what he said? Come on, this is a wonder. I want you to change your name from Billy to Felix. Wonderful. Wonderful. But you see, if you're not smart, you'll take your position. The problem is that we have gone through, we have seen the word of God is in order. If you didn't say it, everybody wants to say the same thing. Billy, you are found because you are Clinton. We bless God. Hallelujah. So, whatever you go through, Stephen, because he lives in the will of God, even though they are beating him, they are killing him, they say, don't count it upon him. Don't forgive them. Yes. Jesus said the same thing. Oh, they don't know what they are doing. Oh, who can do that? In pain, in agony, they are killing you, but you are still praying for them. Because you live in the will of God. The will of God will not curse, but the will of God will bless. So bless those who curse you. Bless them. Yes, because you are having the spirit of God in you. Amen. The spirit of God doesn't curse only curse. Yes. Let it be on you in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh my God. Let's finally read something in the book of Isaiah 13, verse 26. Then that will be okay with me for the day. And let us drink a bait to say, I think. Uh, I will read it myself this time. Thank you. Isaiah 30, the verse 26. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. Now, when you go through problems, okay, it's like you live in darkness. Asleep, your heart is awake. Oh, I love it. Sounds so solemn. One of the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, mm. and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of the seven days. In the day that the Lord bathed up the breach of His people and healed the stroke of their wound. When God heals the stroke of your wound, the sun, the, the, the light of the moon, shall be seven times the, 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 the illumination of the sun. And to be seven times. So when God heals you, He pays you back seven times. He gives you seven times more than what you are expecting. The illumination will be brighter seven times than before. God is promising that when He heals you, you will be stronger seven times than ever before. Hallelujah. When God heals you, He's going to quicken you seven more times. So the enemy can steal from you. But when God is coming to replace the soul, the restoration will be seven times greater than what the enemy has stolen. You hear that? So we can see it from this point of view. That Abraham was looking for a child. But God gave him only one child. But out of the one child, he said, Oh, your children will be like the sons, like, 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 like the sons of heaven. You have celestial children, heavenly children, divine children. Not so like celestial ones, but celestial ones. You have the spirit of God in them. And they'll be uncomfortable. So you will be counting as if they have stolen and they won't be able. God will give you one child and your generation will be seven times stronger than others. Come on. Listen to me, those who are not working. My heart cries for you. But God assure me that when you God will heal your wound, listen, when God heal your wound, your financial results will be seven times more powerful than what you are expecting. Can you say amen to that? So stay cool in the house of the Lord. Let's pray and wait. Even though we are sleeping, God is keeping our heart away. Even though you are sleeping, God is working a miracle in you. 
your desire will really come to be made by the Lord. I can't continue this one o'clock. I'm always here. One day, you shall see. God is about to do a miracle and you will bear it with me. The house will be a house of love. We shall see much more healing. We shall see children crying in the dark of those who do it. God is going to do it about our expectation. There is a need for us to focus. Just get yourself focused on the Lord. Uh, dear Gunners, there is some bread. Dear Gunners, come and take us to a time of focus. I want people to have focus. Focus this afternoon. Focus. Focus on the Lord because it's about to take out of that area. Focus on the Lord in prayer. In prayer, focus on the Lord. Let's be Focus on the Lord. Focus. What do you? What is your problem? What is your problem? What are you going through? God is about to take. If you just focus on that. God is going to take you out of it. He's going to multiply and give to you seven times richer than you are expecting. Just take it. Stay focused. Stay focused on the Lord. No movement. No conversation. Nothing. Just. Stay focused on the Lord. When I was very sad, God speak to me, and the voice was very audible. And I share with you how God said the scars are for my testimony. I don't know the kind of scars that is on you. I don't know the kind of wounds that God will wound you with. But God says He's going to heal you. And when He has broken, when He has healed you, He in your star, your, your, your light, that light will shine. The light of the moon will be seven times greater than that of the, 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 the sun. That of the sun is seven times like seven days. Hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah. Just stay focused. Just stay focused. Just stay focused. Just stay focused. It's not a time of deliverance. It's not a time of prayer for me. It's kind of time of intercession. We are only leading you to stay focused. Just stay focused. Just stay focused. Just stay focused on the Lord. And God is a bold Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, meditate on the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes.